Hello, I'm Janet Sutter, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. The Fisher is a member of the Weasel family, and they were trapped out of Washington in the late 1800s. Eleven of the animals were recently trapped in Canada and then released in the Elwha Valley of Olympic National Park. It marked the first step towards restoring these small mammals in Washington. This initial release, which will be the first of several over the next three years, is a result of a very long-term collaborative effort among agencies and, conservation and the conservation community. Our neighbors to the north in British Columbia are supplying the fishers that are going to come out of the boxes today. Conservation Northwest and the, and the Washington National Park Fund have provided funding not only for the release but, but for the ongoing monitoring of these animals as the population grows here within Olympic National Park. Most importantly, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, who initiated the project and brought all these partners together to make this day happen. It truly demonstrates that partnerships among public agencies and the conservation community can really make a difference. Conditions of British Columbia are a little bit different than they are here, but uh, fishers are, are known to be pretty adaptable. They are one of the most successfully released carnivores, re successfully reintroduced carnivores. And so, and because we've got a good habitat here and we've got good animals, good healthy animals, we think there's a very good chance that, uh, that they'll, they'll do well here. We've corrected, a, corrected something that we've, we didn't manage well in the past, and this is long before the department or the park service was ever involved. They were trapped out. Now uh, we, we have the opportunity to put them back in here and, uh, and see what they do and see, see how that affects. See, we're going to be able to find out what, what happens because they're here. We might, not, we might not know, but we'll have the opportunity to learn that. And we'll also have the satisfaction in knowing that we've got animals out here that once occurred here and were lost, but now we've got them back. With this species, we have a real fighting chance and a real opportunity. We have source population, we have the habitat, so we have, and they've been successfully reintroduced in other states. So I think, you know, that we have a real good opportunity here in Washington to get these animals back as part of our natural heritage. We can't do it all. There's no way that our department can do it all by ourselves. Um, any, any effort like this requires a ton of cooperation and partnerships with other agencies, with NGOs, with private citizens, landowners. Um, it's, it can never be done just by us, that's for sure. All the citizens of Washington are very supportive of trying to reestablish threatened and endangered species. I think, you know, when there's different issues with every one of them, um, and some people who uh, you know, we need to work with them and, and develop partnerships. We need to try to take, uh, have everybody share the burden of reestablishing these species and not have the burden be just on a few people in particular or livelihoods or anything like that. We, we need to spread that among all the citizens. And I think, in general, I think the citizens are very supportive of that. It's the goal of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife to offer recreational opportunities to everyone. One of the latest additions to our inventory of accessible fishing is a wheelchair-friendly spot on the Cowlitz River. The nice thing about this opportunity that was created here on the Cowlitz River is that it's, number one, it's a really good river for fishing, high success rate, one of the biggest returns in the state, one of the best rivers to fish and this opportunity is available. You can use it independently. You don't need any help. You're right down on the edge of the water. As you can see, you're right down here at different water levels fishing like everybody else fishes this 
stretch the river. So no matter what the water level is, you can fish at this platform. As the water recedes in the different time of the year, you can follow the water and chase the water and be right on the edge of it while you're fishing. The other benefit of this site in particular is it was designed to allow you to be integrated right down where everyone else fishes. So when you come with your family and your friends, you can all fish in the same location, be together, be integrated, and not be separated. And this gives you the opportunity to get down here without much effort. You can use this ramp and this opportunity by yourself or with friends, and they can be around you. And you're not limited to an area where it's just wheelchair fishermen only. It's really nice because everyone fishes here. It's where you want to be, and you're right where the action is. You know, a lot of these opportunities, while they work really well for myself that uses a wheelchair, they're actually beneficial for everybody, all segments of the population, particularly those with other types of disabilities that might have walking or mobility limitations. This easy ramp concept coming down from the parking lot, getting you down to the river's edge, is convenient for all folks, from the very young and those that you might push in a stroller to the oldest fisher person you might find out here on the river. It makes it convenient. It's safer. You don't have to go over the rocks to get down here. It gets you down on the base at the bottom and then you can move around from this point once you're down here. You know, the opportunities out there are limited and as we expand our horizons to different river systems we look for rivers that are fishable, rivers and places where people want to be fishing and then we look at the opportunity. Is there property that we can develop and get a site on that's going to withstand all the issues out there. Permitting to get it built, floods, that's a big issue. I mean, everything, we can build something to make it work on a river, but whether it's going to last with the flood, whether we can get the permits to build it, whether we have the money, whether it's in the right location, all those factors have to come together. And this was a really good example where everything came together perfectly from the permitting to the construction to the location of a place where a fish are at. It, this is really nice and being able to get out and not rely on other people, uh, being able to just pick and choose and go where you want to go, whether you go by yourself or go with friends and family, you can make that choice. The choice isn't made for you. It's nice that you have the opportunity to make that choice. Here are the fishing opportunities in Washington during the coming weeks. Our Colville Fish Hatchery recently got special help with the chore of fin clipping a special strain of rainbow trout. These were very special volunteers. Well, we've uh, enlisted the help of the freshman and sophomore class in the Kettle Falls High School. They're coming up here to help us mark fish, ad clipping uh, wild red band rainbow. This biology class from John S. Velt uh, was interested in doing some hands-on stuff and actually it's really helping us out too. The reason we're clipping these fish is we want to differentiate these wild red band rainbow that are native to the streams up here in um, Lake Roosevelt, the tribs going into Lake Roosevelt. Uh, we want to differentiate these fish from the triploids that are in the net pens up there and released at, at the same time. They each have a little uh, net box that they're doing pretty much their own batch of fish out of and they're, we, we're supplying the fish into the anesthetic and then they're dimpy, dipping them out when they're ready and putting them in a net box and just clipping them as they go, putting them back into an area where the fish will recover. These students today will be clipping about 15,000 fish, which is equals one net pen. Uh, total this year we've got 50,000 to mark. The fish that these students are clipping today, uh, they'll be ready for fishermen to catch in uh, June of 09. 
It's really exciting for the school district to work with um, agencies in fish and wildlife because it gives kids really a better understanding of the working industry. For one thing, just being able to actually stay on task for more than just an hour at a time. I mean, these students have been working for three hours now, and you can tell they're getting a little bit more, I guess, tedious and a little bit more bored with the situation. But that's a good. This is a good um, environment for them to understand that the world of work is a, you know, eight hour a day job and they aren't always entertained and that's a really good experience for students to have because in a couple of years they're actually going to be out trying to find a job and so it's a good good experience for that and also a good experience for them to understand what the you know a little bit more in depth of the fishing industry and fish and wildlife does always been interested in the outdoors and hunting and fishing activities and, and viewing nature and getting outside and, 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 and having and having younger generations experience and have a good experience with with the wildlife industry because I think it's a very important part of our economics of small communities the, um, the fishing industry and hunting industry and I really stress that with our students that, that it's really good for our our community to bring many people in for a fishing tournament or maybe a hunting season or just to come in and, and view wildlife, watch the bald eagles on, on, the, on Lake Roosevelt during the winter and those kind of activities. You can learn more about Washington by visiting our state parks. Here's a brief tour of just three of them and what you can expect when you get there. With the changing season, it's time to dust off those spotting scopes and field books and take up the adventure of wildlife watching. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can keep Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Thank you for watching.